Hey guys, in front of me here today, we've got the latest set of sublimation inks. Now, what does that mean? That means we're gonna need to do a color profile to match these colors best for whatever type of printing needed. So, follow along and I'll show you how I do it. We're here at our printer and laptop. Now, the first thing we need to do is open up our printing software and print manager. And once we've got those open, then we can go into our color profiler wizard. And from there, we can go step by step. And once we've completed all those steps, we should have a working RCC color profile. So let's start. First thing we want to do is make our screen biggest. We're going to go over here to set up in our print manager and we're going to go to color profiler. And then you'll see once that opens, you've got a couple of options here in front of you. But the one that we want to do is create a new profile. We don't want to edit an old one or um, go ahead and change the settings from a previous one. We're doing this from start to finish. So create RCC profile. Now we're going to need to do a few settings here. So we've got only one printed, which is correct, the XP600. Now the media type, we're going to go ahead and just label the type of media that we're using. So I use 120 GSM uh, transjet paper uh, for sublimation. So as you see, once we've typed that in there, it's also gonna give it a name over there. We're gonna select our DPR. That we're gonna leave at 720 by 1440. We always want two bits because I want that uh, extra color and the dither needs to be enhanced uh, stochastic too. Then we want to say mirror job. Um, now that we're going to select so that it automatically mirrors it or you could untick it. Um, in this case, actually I'll leave it unticked so that when you're doing the printing, it actually allows you to choose which one you want instead of it uh, defaulted. So now that we've done that, we don't need to do anything else here. We can go next. And now we have got the first step to our color profile. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and print the test, the ink limit test. Now that's just going to print a pattern. And from there, once we printed it on our printer, we're going to need to go ahead and sublimate it. And then from there, I can start explaining what we actually have to do. So let me go ahead and print it. Before I go ahead and I print this again, we just need to make sure that our material is always flat along the bed when doing these test prints for the color profiling. If you do not have it flat enough, you'll find that you'll be struggling to see the difference between all of these little blocks of color after we press because it will have blurry edges. And now we're trying to figure out whether or not the straight edges, which is the best to choose from. Now I'm gonna print two of these because I've got two sets of materials that we're gonna see and test and then pick which is our best option. So I'm just gonna go ahead and lift up my rollers and I'm gonna push my hand across there and push the roller down. And that way I know that this area is as flat as possible and then I'm just gonna hold the paper down once it starts printing. Okay, now that this is finished printing, I'm gonna cut it off. Just be very careful not to touch the ink area because a lot of this ink is a variable of 5% ink all the way to 100% of that specific color and especially on the magenta and cyan there is certainly too much ink around the 100 percent mark and is still very wet so just be careful not to touch this because it will change your outcome once we heat press it okay what i've got in front of me here is our two test prints which was our first step on our color profile uh, manager over there now the reason why I did two is because I've got two sets of material here now the first one is our pro light and second one is Armani satin now the difference between these are purely I want a semi gloss and a high gloss 
um, version when we are heat pressing because this one is going to give me a good indication of what it would look like on most of the materials that I use and then I also want the Amani satin for that high gloss and it takes better quality printing at smaller sizes because the material is closely knit whereas the Pro Light has got a slightly more open knit and also it doesn't allow you to have high detail very small detail when doing sublimation so I want to see the difference between the two and judge my opinion on which color we should be choosing and percentage with these two now just before I put them through my heat press I'm going to be using the same setting for both purely because these fabrics are the same thickness and they also take the same temperature and I use the same settings when I'm doing my day-to-day -day work for both of them which will be 15 revolutions per minute and 226 degrees overall and I'm going to be doing the same as I normally do where we have paper on the bottom and material on top and we're just going to push it through and because it's a small piece we don't have to worry about having the material go in first we can just have it go through naturally so let's go ahead and put them through the press and then I can show you what I'm actually talking about. What we need to do here is look at the individual blocks and decide which is the best percentage of color required to make up our CMYK color for sublimation printing. And what we need to pay attention to is yes, to see which color we prefer, but we also need to see which color eventually starts closing the white gaps in between these lines here. So if you have a look at let's say 30 for instance you can see the white gaps that pattern clearly in between this block now if we keep going and we have also an idea that we want a hundred percent black as in we want uh, to choose a color black that will look dark enough when we heat press it that it looks like it's hundred percent black so now if we keep going keep going now keep in mind the reason why we needed this to be 100% flat while printing is because if it goes ahead and blurs then we do not have a good indication of which one to choose here so let's just have a look and ignore the lighter color areas let's go ahead and look around this here now we don't want to go 100% because we know that's going to oversaturate most pictures we're going to print or artwork we're going to print now in the past I normally went between 60 and 70 percent and I've always had a problem where it was coming out grey instead of black when we're doing black prints. So having a look at the, the inside here it all is the same until we get around 85 percent then the gaps start closing drastically. So in this instance I am going to be picking 80 percent black. And I think that is going to be a more than enough black coverage to make all items that you sublimate look black. Now again, if we go a little bit too light, we end up getting a dark gray and you will be able to see the difference when you are standing next to something that's solid black. So we're gonna go for 80 on that one. Now we're gonna look at our yellow. When it comes to yellow, it is very difficult to tell which yellow you choose. Now from experience, I've always gone with 70% yellow, purely because I can't see visually the gaps in between any of these, even if we have to move this one out the way and move this one in. Um, and it just excuse my head was dirty there, so you'll see there's a bit of uh, black with the yellow because the dampeners are together so that is not too much of a problem but if we're having a look at the gaps the gaps are pretty much all the same I know if I go for a hundred percent yellow I will pick up problems later so I'm going to settle on 70 percent for my yellow so again that's 80 on the black and 70 on the yellow now 
Magenta and Cyan are the most difficult to choose because of how dark this ink actually is. Now, if we have to go ahead and look at magenta and we look at 100% here and 100% there, it is way too saturated. Magenta is supposed to be a much lighter, vibrant color, not a dark, dark color. So in my opinion, and be doing this for a while, we want to go and settle on something with a lower number. Having a look at this area here between 20 and 40, I am going to have to say that for magenta, we're going to go with 30% because that is closer to the actual magenta that we use day to day than rather our darker ones. So we're done with magenta. Now we're gonna have a look at our cyan. Now again, like the cyan here, it is way too dark around the 100% mark. And I can't see myself picking 100% there. So we have to again look at both of these, but we're gonna be looking from the 20% to 35% again. And I'm gonna to have to go between 20 and 30. And having a look between the two, I'm going to probably just settle on 30%. So you have to make sure whatever you're picking, you're not gonna be picking something with too much white in between. Otherwise, you're not gonna have a solid print and you're gonna be unhappy with yourself. So I'm going to be leaning towards 30% for cyan, 30% for magenta, 70% for yellow, and 80% for black. Now that I know what I need, we're gonna to go to the computer and pick the percentages and then go to step number two. All right, so we're back at our computer here. We've got the color swatch that we first printed. Now, if you have a look at our screen, number two is picking our percentages for our color profile. So we're gonna go ahead and start with um, cyan. Now, we said that we were going with 30%. So we go ahead and pick uh, 30 over there. Then magenta, we're doing 30 as well. Cyan, we're gonna do 70 and then our black we're doing 80 percent okay now once we've done that we're going to go ahead and we look at the next step which is number three if correct there will be no bleed on the print which is all that extra blur and if it's incorrect then we just have to redo this percentage until we are happy that we don't have this problem. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to push print and then we'll see it on the printer. Okay, so one thing you also have to keep in mind before I push print there is when you're doing your color profiling, do a test nozzle and see whether or not you got any colors that are mixing. Now, remember I said to you there was a bit of black inside the, the yellow and I just did a print test nozzle and there we are, there is black inside. So you always have to make sure before you're doing the next step, clean your nozzle, make sure that there's no colors mixing whatsoever. Otherwise you're wasting your time completely with doing this whole color profile. That's why I did two tests, not one. Okay, so now that that's printed, we're gonna go ahead and heat press this, but only on one fabric. So we're gonna put these two next to each other just so that you can see, yes, this one is mirrored because it has to be. Now, as you can see, the color ranging on the right hand one is the first one we did. We can see it goes all the way to 100 for all the colors. But now that we've picked a certain group or area, this breaks it down even more to a more specific color percentage. Now, what this means is I went ahead and I picked 30, 30, 70, and 80, if you remember on the program. So now what they are allowing us to see is whether or not that is the correct color once we've heat pressed it, whether or not we would like to choose maybe 67% or maybe even going down to 21% instead of 30%. So this is what this test print is for is to show you and break down the color percentages even in smaller uh, increments rather than bigger increments so that you could see whether or not what you chose was correct. So we're going to go ahead heat press this and see whether or not these four end pieces here are correct to the color I am looking for or do I need to go back and change it to another one.
Now that we've sublimated this, we can now go ahead and look at our final product and see and compare these two together to see whether or not what we had chosen is correct. Now, again, yellow is a very big iffy one. This one you can never tell, so I'm gonna leave it at 70. We'll only know later if this will be a problem. So yellow, I'm gonna exclude out of here because this is what I chose last time. Black, I am still very happy with my decision on 80. I do not have any bleed or ink ble uh, leaching into the whiter portions of um, these lines here because that is quite important now if we go ahead and look at magenta we are, I can definitely see that the the number there is blurred so which means those lines are a bit encroached but the color itself is what I'm looking for magenta in that aspect is perfect cyan I'm going to stick with 30 and we'll see whether or not we'll change that later but for now these are the colors I'm going with and let's go to the next step on the computer okay now we are back here at our laptop now we finished with that process we finished with one two and three I'm happy with the end goal that we've chosen we can always change it later but for now we're gonna go ahead with this we're gonna go and push next so the next thing we need to do to begin, set up the measurement device and calibrate it. So we're gonna go ahead and quickly plug in that device and put it next to us and calibrate it with the settings that are here because once we've calibrated that machine, we're gonna then print this block of colors here and scan them one by one until the computer is happy with scanning the colors. And from there, it can then create a profile from that. So let's go ahead and get our color profiling scanner. Now that we've plugged in our device, all we need to do is now leave the setting as it is. Device is the XRAT R1. We connected it via our USB cable. So now what we need to do is calibrate this eye. Um, and what we need to do is just push on calibrate and then go ahead and make sure our white is showing, not the black. So if we open that up again, you can see the white and we need to calibrate this eye to the white here. So what we're gonna do is make sure that white's open as it is, put it down flat, put this on top, make sure it's nicely positioned. Then we can go ahead and push calibrate and it says, please position the device on the white tile and press the button to calibrate. Now the button is on this side here, I'm gonna click it and on the screen it says calibrating and once that's finished then we can continue to the next step okay so now it is finished calibrating what we need to do is then move over to step number two now that says print measure a new target or you may import linearization data from another rcc profile only use the neutral linearization if you are going to import a pre-linear third-party profile in this case we're going to print one because we do not have a previous one we're going to start from scratch so we'll go ahead and we're going to push print and then we'll go to the printer Okay, so now that we've printed this, we're gonna go ahead and press it on one piece of material. Now I can see we don't have too much blurring going on here. We can go ahead, take this straight to our scanner and we can start scanning the first one. So what we need to do is make sure our piece of material is flat as possible. We do not wanna stretch it at all. It needs to be nice and straight. We're gonna lay it down there. We're gonna take uh, this first piece here and we're going to cover that one we take our machine off our plate and we put it into the rest there and then we go ahead and just make sure that we can't see the next color from underneath and if we need to move it we have to move it so what we need to do is make sure that when we're starting our scan, if you look at your eye, it needs to be off to the side. So what we're gonna do is start scanning from off to number one all the way to the right hand side and then do line by line. So we're gonna put that back on over there, move that to the side, and then we're gonna go ahead to our program to start the scanning process. 
So now that we've gone ahead and we've done that, we've print, printed our first block of colors there. What we need to do is now click on the measure button below to begin. After measuring, you can select a swatch to re-measure or a portion of the target and then double click a swatch to show the linearization curve. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna push measure, which is that over there. We're gonna push that. And then it says there, please place the device on the ruler, press the button, wait until audible signal, then scan the strip from left to right and do one to six in row. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and push our button, make sure to wait for that noise, hold down the button. You're gonna press lightly and move slowly to your right by scanning the first row. So line number one was done. We did it correctly. So now we're just gonna do line number two and then we're gonna go all the way to number six and just do exactly the same until this thing says we've done the scanning correctly. So let's do it. Okay, so now that we've gone ahead and we scanned the first set, we can now go ahead and push next. Okay, so now we've got a whole bunch of other things we need to print, and now it's about different colors. So it's now not about CMYK, it's now a mixture of colors. So again, this is gonna be the same as before. What we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna print this piece here, sublimate it, and then we're gonna go and see if we need to change a whole bunch of our color mixtures, which is going to be C mixed with, or let's say cyan mixed with magenta, uh, cyan mixed with yellow, magenta mixed with yellow, and how they are and how they respond to making colors overall. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to say, begin our test, so we're gonna print our multi-ink limit test. So we're gonna go ahead, ahead and push print and we'll go to the printer. What this test is, and again, this is like the first one, what we have to do is have a look at all of the colors there and see where we can find ink that is slowly bleeding into those white angled lines in the blocks. And then we're going to slowly change in increments of 5% on the computer um, where I feel necessary. So we're not gonna do it to all of them. Some of them will need to be changed, some of them won't. So we'll just go through it and just show you exactly what I'm referring to. And then I'll go ahead and make the changes on the computer in terms of what percentage I'm gonna be choosing. So basically, like I said, we're gonna be looking for along the lines until the color starts bleeding into those white lines. So we'll just use this particular row as an example, and then I will go ahead and go through all of them by myself and just pick the colors necessary. In order to make a certain shade of, let's say, blue, um, it's cyan mixed with magenta. Now, if we have a look going through here, and keep in mind, if your print is blurry, this is not going to help you. You need to make sure you've got a nice crisp print. So if we have a look here, we can start seeing the ink bleed into itself for around about 85%. And now what I mean by that is the white lines start losing clarity and you start having less white. So if we are going to give a quick um, comparison, if we go ahead and we look at number 100 over here on the black, versus 80 on the magenta here. You can see there's a lot less white to these lines than there are in the 80% there. You can see a lot more white, the lines are a hell of a lot more crisp versus this block here. This is heavy, heavily saturated and has a lot of ink coming into those white lines and that's not what we want. We want something more or less the lines of let's say 95 where we can see a lot more white and it's a lot more crisp. So I'll go ahead, have a look through all of these. I'll change it and then we'll go to the next step.
Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and show you one for example that I would like to change. And as we discussed on that piece of material there, we're gonna go ahead and change the one to 95. And I'm gonna leave that one because that's the one I definitely want to change. Now, um, we can go ahead and print the verification to do the smaller increments where it's in four to five percent and it shows you a big, bigger range of that specific color. I'm not gonna do that because it's the exact same repeated process as before. We're gonna go ahead and move to the next step and that's the final step of our color profiling where we have to scan some more lines. So we're gonna go ahead and push next. This is an optional extra if you wanna go right down to Pantone color exact, but we do not want to. We just wanna get a generalized color that's best for most prints. So I'm gonna skip this step and we're gonna go straight to the next step and finally save our profile. So we're gonna go ahead and push next and then we get to our last page here. Now, these are all general settings, so these can be changed or you could leave them as they are. So for instance, your black generation, this is always gonna stay the same as your GCR smooth. Your black starts, now what that means is when you are starting your print on your printer, do you want it to have more black ink or do you want it to have a zero, which means it's gonna start with whatever I've chosen on the actual color profile. So in this case, we leave black start zero. Our black width, I'm gonna leave at 100%. I do not wanna change that. Our black is not the problem. It was the rest of the color range. From there, the total amount of ink is 400%. Why? Because we've got four sets of different ink. C, M, Y, K. So we're gonna leave 400% as it is. Then the profile size, we want it large, just in case we've got some customers that will be printing on very, very big items. We wanna keep it to large so it's not condensed. Then the RCC profile version. Now I'm saving it as four because we want it to be a later version. 2.1 is for previous people. Um, everyone that should be receiving this new ink will should have the new program. If not, we can just go back in and save it as a 2.1 again. Now we're not gonna be using a UV brightener and we're not gonna be applying our chrome adjustment. Those are for different types of inks. We're just gonna go straight to generate. And there we go. It's gonna start generating our profile and we are finished. So guys, that's how you make a color profile. And if you can't do it yourself, you can always contact sales to get it arranged for you. Thank you for watching. marks the 10th anniversary of am.co.za in the South African market. And through that time, we have experienced considerable growth and expansion with the support of our valued customers. To mark our 10th anniversary, we have bought a warehouse at Sunny Rock in East Grand, and we will commence with renovation and construction in 2023. The facility will comprise a massive 2,000 square meter warehouse, 300 square meters of demonstration space, 150 square meters of sales space, and 400 square meters of spare part storage on the top floor. 550 square meters of showroom space on the middle floor. 400 square meters for machine.africa for machine repairs with its own dedicated entrance. And a 250 square meter tea garden and coffee shop for your convenience. Our group now comprises four businesses. AM.co.za is our main business and supplies the machines, spare parts, and consumables. Machine.Africa does the installations for our clients and handles on-site and factory repairs. Ambitious Academy ensures that our clients achieve the very best levels of productivity by providing training and certification. And our automated AI-driven online store, Buy This, brings all products online and distributes countrywide. We invite you to be part of this exciting journey as we establish our new headquarters. Watch as the process unfolds and be part of the adventure to meet all of your machinery and productivity needs with this magnificent new facility. am.co.za. Achievement matters.